Oh, 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 and, and I was going to talk about buying a house before I get to the Channel 5 video. I have to pee really bad. So before I go pee pee, I am going to show you this funny video. Is that Apple for sale? Uh, yeah, we're about to put it on sale <laughs> right now, actually. Well, I'm in the market, so tell me about your Apple. Why should I buy it? <laughs> nice try. Okay, people, here's how this is going to work. I have an Apple here. The highest bidder's going home with this. I want all bids in in the next two minutes, then we're closing it. Bidding starts at $5. Feeling pretty confident there, huh? I mean, don't you $10. think? $10. He said starting at 5 15 Is this a new Apple? Yeah, just listed. I'm pre-qualified. I'll pay cash. I got cash. $20. i will take it for $100. What? I'm from California. It's the cheapest Apple I've ever seen. $120. Why did I do that? I, I watched it twice because honestly, it's because it's so real. This is like, this is literally my experience, except, and I briefly talked about this. I briefly talked about this. My experience is even worse than this because I put an out offer out for two houses with the recommendation of my agent. I put a offer that just straight up was the asking price. Okay. Like just straight up the asking price, which is, you know, that's what the Apple is, right? $5 is what he's going to sell it for, or $10. And both of those offers came back with counters that were $100,000 above the asking price. But the worst part is there wasn't even any other buyers, dude. Like normally there are other buyers. And that's why you're like, well, the other buyer wants more money. So, you know, I like you. So what's good? So that's not even the asking price then. you. These people are crazy because it's such a ridiculous position it doesn't matter uh what the what the f price is they're just like no i want more like you get treated like absolute f sh and one of the houses literally said i would not be allowed to renegotiate after an appraisal as in uh you know the bank comes in to appraise the house to give you a loan on the house because that house is now collateral and let's say you buy a million dollar house and the appraisal comes back and says well, this is a $500,000 house. What normally you would do in that situation is go back and forth with the with the other seller and say, well, this house is $500,000. I'm not going to pay that because now I can't even, you know, I'm going to have to put down so much more money because the bank won't cover it. Like the bank is not going to cover the, the million dollars for the uh, loan because there's not enough collateral. So you have to pay out of pocket. I have to pay $500,000 out of pocket. That's crazy. And these guys were like, no. We don't fucking care that you are not even allowed to renegotiate after the uh, after the appraisal. If it's lower, then you have to cover the additional, on top of the down payment, you have to cover the additional amount out of pocket if the bank won't cover it for you. I want you to understand that this is happening in Los Angeles. As in, every house that you purchase is already insanely priced regardless because you're basically paying for the land because land is not infinite. This is literally like, this is an insane thing that they're doing. Like this practice, you, you wouldn't be able to get away with this anywhere else except there's currently we're in an asset bubble. So this is happening all around the country. I'm not alone in this. We are at the precipice of a insane bubble. Like, I don't know when the fuck it's gonna burst. If I knew that, obviously I would strategically uh, wait it out, but I am getting to a point where I, I'm just not gonna buy a house. Like it's fucking bullshit. I'm not gonna buy a house, I don't think. The hilarity is like, I'm looking at the area and the motherfuckers that are doing this are also across the street from other motherfuckers that are selling a larger houses for cheaper i i've been to those houses i don't like the houses right and they're selling houses for cheaper and those houses have been on the market for 30 days and even already have a price reduction so like it's clear that people aren't even buying it and they're like no no i will not sell it i will not sell it like why are you doing this the house itself is a depreciating asset the land on the other hand, is an appreciating asset, especially when you're purchasing land in like fucking Los Angeles in a, like a really good area of Los Angeles. Now, part of that is because big companies are straight up like hedge funds are straight up purchasing as much as many houses as they fucking can so that they can turn around and start renting it to people so they can become landlords, which ironically creates a system where buying a house is unaffordable for most average Joes so they are stuck renting forever. So it is a problem that 
basically creates uh, another opportunity for uh you know these these hedge funds to make more money as a consequence of that not only are houses in a bubble the whole market is in a bubble when it comes down to it's going to be catastrophic trust me i've been watching this for a long time now i think confidence is going to shift the moment that there is even a subtle hint of interest rates increasing and it's going to come well there's two things that are going to happen when the mortgage moratorium ends the bubble is going to burst that's one obviously because there's it's going to automatically unlock a bunch of foreclosed homes and then also because inflation is occurring right now because lumber prices are so fucking expensive because new developments have halted as a consequence of covid for so long and and also because people have a lot of money like the middle class and upper middle class specifically were able to hold on to a lot of their wealth and actually accumulate a lot more capital now so they have some money to be able to purchase a house like they finally put a lot of money together so there's a lot of people buying houses right now which is like boosting the fuck out of the prices home house prices increase four times faster than income what does it mean for future borrowers what does it mean maybe it means the federal reserves z i r p and q e quantitative easing policies have made houses unaffordable for most people except hedge fund managers foreign money launderers desperate well-off yield seekers blackstone and overpaid fed staffers rather than protecting communities and making it easy for homeowners to restructure bad mortgages or repair their credit after succumbing to predatory loans the government facilitated the transfer of wealth from people to private equity firms sickening yeah so that now blackstone could just fucking suck up everything dude you're a big guy build your house yeah i'm gonna build my house with my hands that's how it works anyway this is, of course, not innovation. This is just uh, capitalist predators artificially inflating the price so they can end up making more money and making it harder for people to fucking purchase homes, making it so that the American dream of buying a single family home is even more of a dream. I don't know when this is going to happen, but I suspect that the the end to quantitative easing will probably destroy market confidence after so many fucking years and it'll be a stopgap measure to control inflation so that's where we're uh that's that's uh that will be the better opportunity to strike while the iron is hot stop being a wee ho snob this situation does not exclusively exist in los angeles please stop saying this is an exclusive los angeles problem you're literally a fucking idiot you are the reason why your Tennessee neighborhood is also getting brutalized because people in LA are noticing that it's significantly more affordable to work from home and live in a state like Tennessee. So they move to Nashville or they move to fucking Texas and then it fucks up your Texas market, uh, your Texas housing market. That is literally a problem all around the country right now. It might sound cool when your dad makes, you know, a hundred thousand above asking price on his fucking house, but it's not going to be so great when he can't find another house to purchase. And that's the reality. When people are leaving California, they're not leaving California because of taxes. That's a lie. It's poor people leaving California because they can't afford to live in California. So they fucking go somewhere else. They simply cannot afford to rent or even purchase a home. One of 15. It's been hard to convey through anecdotes or data how bizarre the U.S. housing market has become. For example, a Bethesda, Maryland home buyer working with Redfin included in her written offer a pledge to name her firstborn child after the seller. She lost. This stuff is like kind of stupid, but even on the money side, it's just like idiotic. Two out of five. There are now more realtors than listings. Inventory is down 30%, 37% year over year to a record low. The typical home sells in 17 days. Another record low. Home prices are up a record amount. 24% year over year to a record high. And still, homes sell on average for 1.7% higher than the asking price. Another record. But in two of America's largest cities, inventory has increased in New York by 28%, in San Francisco by 77%. San Francisco hasn't had an inventory increase this large since 2008. And still, in both markets, prices are increasing. In 2020, New construction permits were down 13% in DC and New York, 40% in LA, 48% in Chicago, 50% in Seattle. Um, permits were up 25% in Miami, 56% in Vegas, 96% in Greenville, 122% in Detroit, and 246% in Knoxville. Lumber prices are up 300%. We talked about this earlier, I briefly mentioned it. In Redfin's annual survey of nearly 2,000 home buyers, 63% reported having bid on a home they hadn't seen in person. This is the fucking CEO of Redfin. Like he's doing marketing for Redfin, but he has access to data that is 
you know, pretty solid. In an April survey of 600 Redfin.com users who had relocated in the past year, about two thirds of the people who moved got a house the same size or bigger, but about the same proportion, two thirds spent the same or less on housing. Even though most of the people who moved got a bigger home, 78% reported having the same or more disposable income after their move. Idaho home prices could triple and still seem affordable to a Californian. For low tax states, four people move in for every one who leaves. For Texas, the ratio is five to one. For Florida, it's seven to one. Now, the reason why people are moving to low tax state is not because they're fucking low taxes, but those states also have more conveniently priced homes, which is weird why the CEO of Redfin is refusing to acknowledge that. Cities and states have no leverage to raise taxes after many promised new money for social justice. The federal government will have to fund long-term investments. Wonder how odd that the CEO of Redfin is not mentioning the real reason why people are moving into those states. This migration to lower cost areas, interesting. He does acknowledge it in the second tweet. Is it the taxes that make it a low cost area? Or you think it's the property, the average price for a fucking home or rental property is the reason why it's a lower cost area or the cost of living in general is lower in those areas. Now nah, it must be the taxes. It may lead to lower workforce participation. For many families, Redfin is relocated. The money saved on housing costs uh, lets one parent from stop uh, from stopping from working. A wave of Redfin cough, uh, customers are. Well, this is just a fucking hashtag ad for Redfin. Lenders are calling employers to confirm that the home buyer will have permission to work remotely when the pandemic ends. Like, you know why this is indecent? Because like motherfuckers that are finally able to afford a home because they have like a, 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 an amount of capital that they've accrued over the uh, over the course of the fucking pandemic are so fucked when basically they're not able to refinance. When basically they realize that the investment property that they purchased and now that they're stuck with is not going to uh hold its value especially if they fucking bought it in some random area that is not slated to appreciate uh to the goddamn moon like you would in certain parts of california like in fucking los angeles and then they're fucked and even if they are able to refinance at that point the interest rates are going to be higher so no matter what their refinance works now they have a property <laughs> that's value is lower that you're absolutely stuck with that is the bubble that's the that's the secondary problem here the average housing budget for out-of-towners moving to nashville was seven hundred and twenty thousand dollars, 50 percent higher than locals yeah keep talking about like Hassan, why don't you move out of california i'm make i'm doing you a fucking favor staying here bitch look at this average housing budget for out-of-towners moving into nashville is seven hundred twenty thousand dollars, 50 percent higher than the locals four hundred and eighty-five thousand dollar budget it used to be coastal elites who worried that every adult in the family had to win a career lottery just to afford a home now that feeling may spread it's not just income that's k-shaped but mobility 90 percent of people earning a hundred thousand dollars per year expect to be able to work virtually compared to the 10 percent of those earning forty thousand dollars or less per year the folks who need low-cost housing the most have the least flexibility to move. An investor recently said, with an ancient touch of awe, but also greed, that one source of America's miraculous economic recovery was the bounty of the land itself. You know, uh, not dissimilar to what Israel's doing. Uh, you know, the, the, the wholesale genocide of uh, indigenous populations and resettling American colonialists into those lands. But yes, the endless expansion and the endless amount of land or seemingly endless amount of land in the United States of America was uh, a part of America's wealth and prosperity. Uh, we have more room to grow than we ever imagined. We just have to make sure that benefits everyone. By the way, throw bro is correct. If you're purchasing a house as an investment, you can still build way more wealth by renting and putting more towards investments. This is what my fucking financial analyst friends constantly yell at me about. They'll always be like, dude, just reinvest it into your business. Like, what the fuck are you doing? Just keep renting and reinvest into your business. And it's like, I try to explain to them, like, dog, the overhead for what I do is relatively low. And that kind of growth, if I sought out to, like, grow this business by, like, hiring employees and shit like that, that kind of growth would still not solve the one significant problem I have. And that is time. Time is finite. I do not have more time to be able to tackle on additional parts of a potential growing business. I'm still so mad that, like... I lost the dream house that I literally found. It was like the second house I went to and it was my dream house. It was still, of course, expensive, obviously above like uh, what the market rate would be for something like that. But it was affordable in comparison to like all these other fucking places I've seen. And I lost it and it fucking sucks. I was going to have a pool, boys. This thing was on. Let me tell you something. This fucking house was literally on the market for 53 days. It was on the market for 53 days. I step into it and I go, oh, fuck, this is it. I just felt something where I was like, this is it. Like, I, I feel I feel like at home here. Like, I can see myself living here for a while. 
Yeah, it had a hot tub and a pool. No hot tub streams for you guys. Anyway, I guess I'm a sadist. So let's talk about California residential real estate. Did you know it's bonkers? Like just completely bananas. Let's look at some examples. I live in Los Angeles, but also pay close attention to what's happening in the Bay Area and the desert. Lots of folks still buying in the Bay Area and lots of folks decamping to the desert. All of these markets are completely absurd. This one's fun. Are you sitting down? Yes, it's lovely. Oh my God, it's so lovely. Sold for 78% over asking. It was listed at $1 million. It's over 2.12. A three-bedroom, three-bathroom in fucking Mount Washington. It's actually kind of cool, though. Maybe with the above house, you're like, but Sally, it's just so lovely. That doesn't matter. Look at this three-bed, two-bath in West LA. It's a normal house. Just a cute little ranch guy. Listed for $1.299 million and sold for $1.48. That's, this is the most normal thing. Dude, this house, dude. Look at this fucking house. That was sold for $1.48 million. doesn't matter if the home is spectacular or average. Like, it is actually nice, though. I love those fucking beams. The, the exposed, like, roof. It's very nice. It doesn't matter if the home is spectacular or average, if it's in a desirable area or not. Homes are selling for hundreds of thousands over the list. There's a two-bedroom in Berkeley. Less than 1,000 square feet and just sold for $1.377 million. This one... Uh, 1,126 square foot home in Bernal Heights in San Francisco just sold for $400,000 above list. Originally listed for 1.195 and after a bidding war, the sale was 1.6. So when that house gets sold for one, what the, is so ugly. When this house gets sold for $1.6 million, all of the other houses in that fucking street are all of a sudden, boom, their, their market value just went up. Now, the problem is an appraiser can just look at that and be like, well, this is not worth that. So then what, you're, what you end up doing is kicking the can down the line to a level where like one person is ultimately going to get caught holding the bag. It's literally like an like a infinite fucking uh, appreciation, an infinite artificial appreciation of, of, of value here. And you don't want to be the motherfucker holding the bag, especially if you don't have a tremendous cash flow and can justify overpaying by hundreds of thousands of dollars for a house whose, uh, th which is value will not greatly improve over the course of the you know 30 years that you're fucking paying it off. Sorry, but the list price doesn't matter. Portland's mean Median sale price is up 16.8% year over year and 64.9% of the homes sell above listed price. That's crazy. There are no rules right now. Comps are useless and people are throwing money at literal piles of brick. It's a free for all. People are fucking buying teardowns for millions of dollars in Los Angeles, depending on what neighborhood you're in. A teardown for the record, for those of you who don't know, is like a very old house that you purchase just for the land it sits on and then you blow it up and then rebuild one of those ugly ass boxes that like, you know, the FaZe Clan lives in. Comps, for the record, uh, competitive, uh, competitive prices, like you're comparing, not competitive prices, like you're comparing other houses in their neighborhood and what they sold for. The amount of information you can find on houses is fucking insane. Yeah, comparable sales. The hardest part to accept when trying to figure out what the hell's going on is there's no reasoning. It's not just because realtors are purposely undervaluing homes that entice a bidding war, and it's not because inventory is historically low. It's for several dozen reasons. Whether putting an offer on a shitty unrenovated chondro for an astronomical 475k is a bad in a bad area. There were 200 plus offers within 48 hours. What the fuck? It was all sold cash, no contingencies, 50k over asking. That's what happened basically to me as well. With no offers, which is even worse than that story actually. 200 plus offers is psychopathic. I don't know how the fuck that happened. But the two houses I put a fucking offers on, they didn't even have other offers. So the, the fucking seller's agent was like, what I'm going to end up doing is wait it out because I suspect that there's going to be other buyers that will come in and purchase this house. List is important because it's what you get pre-qualified for from a bank. You're approved for up to 1.5 million. So you're going to go looking for homes under 1.5 million. But all those homes end up selling for 1.75 and it's horrible for uh, buyers. Yeah, you literally are looking at like, you find your dream home, you get pre-approved for $1.5 million, you don't have another $250,000 to fucking to make up the difference, and all the houses are getting sold for above asking price. So what are you going to do? Um, in 2000, oh, it, the difference between now and 2008 is in 2008, people had taken on loans they couldn't afford uh, because lenders were being lazy. Now the buyer, <laughs> lazy, <laughs> that's one way to say uh, uh, predatory. Now the buyer pool is extremely prepared with an 800 plus credit score, 500k cash down for the down payment, excellent job stability in lucrative industries. Yeah, except it doesn't fucking matter because it's going to burst and then they're fucked. They're caught holding the bag. Nailed it. High earners save a lot in the past 15 months. I only care about how much 
the monthly mortgage will be, the actual final sale price isn't a huge factor. Have you ever been in love? I don't think so. Do you want me to describe it to you? Shopping for a new single-family home in the U.S. is arguably harder than ever before. There's okay. a bidding war for literally every home on the market, every fixer-upper, every every house that needs oh, even a lot of work. My neighbors, actually, because we were on vacation, were calling me and texting me saying, like, what is going on at your house? There's people in a line down the block. We saw two people having a fight. With city dwellers emigrating to the suburbs and families looking for home offices and bigger yards, prices for the American dream home have skyrocketed. Home prices surged in March 2021, up 13% from the year prior, according to the S&P Case-Shiller Index. Everybody expected uh, housing to really sort of dry up with the rest of the economy, and in fact, the opposite has happened. We know that home ownership is the primary way of getting into the middle class, but unfortunately, there are many impediments to that that are divided by class and particularly race. With the 30-year fixed mortgage rate hovering near a 50-year low and a strong demand pushing prices to all-time highs, why is the housing supply so meager? Is the U.S. running out of houses? The housing shortage conversation is kind of bullshit, and here's why. There are so many vacant fucking properties, dude. There are so many vacant properties that are just simply being held on to because of how expensive the land is that's what it is it's easier to just like sit on a fucking vacant home and there's not enough punitive measures not enough regulation to make it so that it is unsustainable to just sit on a fucking property which it should be but that will never change because it's so valuable to for for gigantic banks to just fucking buy out as much as they can and just sit on it that uh you know why the fuck shouldn't people do that what is the progressive socialist solution i already told you the actual like social democratic slash or if you want socialist solution beyond like uh anarcho-communism or marxist leninist historically and the and the uh, takes that they've had on uh housing is literally making it unaffordable to be a landlord making it rather not even be a landlord but making it unaffordable to sit on fucking vacant properties and then making it unaffordable to purchase multiple properties and sit on them or rent them out. But the immediate solution is making it so that it's impossible to just like fucking sit there and wait for this thing to accrue value. That's how you would do it. How do you do that? Empty home taxes? I mean, there are always going to be loopholes beyond that too, though. For example, one of the ways that uh, you can avoid that is by like repurposing the land to something that is more tax beneficial. Then simultaneously while you're doing that, you need to fuck the market up on purpose by forcibly creating or forcibly buying out and uh, re rezoning certain areas to have affordable housing or rather public housing. That's how you're supposed to do it. According to experts, a few key steps home buyers can take to navigate the ultra competitive market include getting pre-approved for a mortgage, finding a good real estate agent, and figuring out exactly how much you're willing to spend. An additional option first time home buyers have is to rent the home back to the seller while they look for their new home. My best advice at this time is if you don't want to overspend, go into a house knowing that you're going to do a little work and you'll probably get it for a better price. And honestly, you can turn it into your dream home. Dude, that's fucking crazy, dude. Yeah, just go buy a house that's already fucking expensive. And then on top of that, literally pay for uh, pay to renovate it such a good fucking example man what if they don't have capital dog what the fuck yeah just go buy a fixer upper dude yeah because everyone has like uh enough money to just like rent out another apartment while their house is being worked on and shit you know what i mean the u.s has a housing shortage with potential sellers unwilling to show their homes during the pandemic, in April 2021, there were 1.16 million U.S. homes for sale, down 20.5% from a year earlier. That lack of inventory has helped push the median price of existing homes higher, up a little over 19% from the previous year to a historic $341,600. One key factor in that price jump is with fewer, less expensive homes on the market, sales at the higher end accounted for Oh, that's so interesting. Wonder why. Much of the activity. 
During that same period, homes were selling in record time. It's like rich people are just like swapping fucking expensive houses amongst themselves. You know what I mean? Like they're, they're the only ones who have fucking money to just uh, engage in this sort of behavior. They're just like, here, you take my fucking $70 million mansion. No, you take my $15 million mansion. Okay, here you go. I'm two, typically just 17 days on the market. While several large publicly traded companies like NVR, Lennar, Beezer Homes, and Hubnanian Enterprises construct single-family homes, townhouses, and condos, the vast majority of new construction in the U.S. is done by small businesses. Home building is one of the last real vestiges of small business in America. Uh, the, the overwhelming a number of housing, and I want to say it's close to 75 or 80 percent, is built by small businesses mostly family owned uh, public housing is fine but without a private market as well who get the beach from beautiful house or is everyone just assigned to live in some bleak standard house with basic utilities i'm sure you don't want that for yourself right we need to both dude i didn't even say why is the why is the fucking inception of public housing like why is the mention of public housing immediately uh triggering some fucking synapses like firing some synapses in your brain that leads you to believe like oh if the government is making houses that means the government is making all houses. That means the government is assigning all houses by uh, by by party loyalty. You know, if you're a part of the party apparatus, that means that you get to have uh, good real estate. If not, you have bad real estate. All of a sudden, we are a jailing landlord. What the fuck is going on? Why am I speaking like this? Suka bliot! Also, live in some bleak standard house with basic utilities and massive privilege self-report. Like, literally, most people have no fucking access to living in some bleak standard house with basic utilities. So I'm pretty sure if you ask the overwhelming majority of people, like, actually not in America, but if you asked, if you asked, because <laughs> uh, even in America, because in America, even the, the poorest of the poor are just like, nah, dog, like, I, I, I don't want that because then I can be a millionaire one day and I'm not going to have that fucking nice house. <laughs> you know, maybe not in this community, but in most communities, motherfuckers would be like, oh, I don't want that kind of fucking shit because one day I'm going to be a millionaire and then I will not want to live in substandard houses like that. Zoning laws for single family homes and residential buildings are actually really weak compared to other building type zoning regulations. You say this, but like the argument is so fucking stupid. Oh, it's actually like how have capitalists fed you this idea that it's actually the regulations that are causing people to go and build like insane fucking luxury condominiums rather than affordable housing whenever there is an opportunity to build something. NIMBYs, no one wants affordable housing in their neighborhood driving their house price down. So that's one fucking problem. NIMBYs have an issue, but NIMBY ranges from everything from like uh, people that don't want affordable housing in their neighborhoods all the way to people that don't want a fucking like oil fracking well behind their goddamn house. NIMBY means not in my backyard. So people that fucking cry about zoning regulations still refuse to acknowledge the problem with vacant houses. If there are six vacant houses for every homeless person in the fucking country, then why the fuck are we not trying to tackle the issue of vacant houses? Why? Because... Just like property value will decrease if the market is oversaturated with affordable houses, the same issue remains if there is government housing or public housing. Student debt. When I talk to young people, a lot of times they are trying to pay their rent versus their grocery or they're trying to pay their student loans. Single family zoning pervasive across much of the U.S. limits the number of units that can be built on a plot of land, making it difficult for families to afford certain communities. Single family zoning um, has really been a barrier for lower to moderate income people to be able to live in particular neighborhoods because single family zoning bans any type of home being built or any type of multifamily home or any type of detached home from being built, which is a huge barrier to people who are just trying to start off. But that may be starting to change. In 2019, Oregon became the first state to pass legislation banning single family zoning in most of the state. Around the same time, Minneapolis became the first big American city to end the practice. So one of the major impediments to our shortage of housing, in addition to the land economics and the supply chain, is that we have a lot of communities in this country. Damn, sounds like single family zoning regulations should be removed. Damn, sounds like motherfuckers in a leftist community are watching a CNBC broadcast about single family zoning regulations and taking it hook, line and sinker when there are uh, multiple different ways of eliminating this problem. Almost feels like uh, you guys are a bunch of goddamn suckers who literally turn like this on a moment's notice. Most people that hyper-focus, the reason why I get mad at this is because people hyper-focus on the housing supply over and over and over again. Buying a house like, we have no way of knowing you'll pay back this loan for $1,000 a month. I've been paying my landlord $1,500 a month. 
Why can't you save up forty thousand dollars as a pound uh, down payment to prove us? Because I've been paying landlord fifteen hundred dollars a month. Yeah. <laughs> Ban me, but I'm getting bored with all this adult talk. This is literally politics, dude. This isn't adult talk. This is politics through and through. And, and it, it's like we are talking about the consequences of, of uh, politics. Me, a 14-year-old. Anyway.